Hey everyone, Duke Nougat 3D here with another master review in my collection, and today I have for you another US M3 Army Diaphragm Gas Mask from the Second World War period, but this is not a normal one because this is what I like to call a transitional M3 diaphragm. You see, there's a common misconception that the uh, black painted uh, M3 diaphragms, with obviously the black painted M3 diaphragm angle tube and the black hardware webbing uh, or harness webbing. Um, these are often labeled as early production or, you know, just an early variant, and that is not entirely true. In fact, you see a lot more of these black painted ones than these gray ones, which leads me to indicate that these gray painted ones are sort of a stopgap a transitional variants that came between the normal production black ones and the M3A1 army diaphragm, which obviously has a different diaphragm angle tube assembly in the first place. So there are a few hardware differences from the normal M3 diaphragm, which really warranted why I needed to make a video on this, but also because the sheer fact that this one is probably the mintiest M3 diaphragm that I've e ever handled in my collection. Like even my M3A1, which was in mint condition, was not nearly as clean as this one. I, it's almost kind of cursed how clean this Class B rubber is because I've never really seen anything like it. Uh, or I have, but just not in the hands of private collectors in quite some time. So I don't really need to cover the general history of the M3 diaphragm. I've done that in all my other reviews of the mask. So let's get right down into the kit. So obviously the carrier would be as normal, just a standard M4A1 style side kidney bag carrier uh, printed with US Army diaphragm gas mask, universal size, chemical core insignia, all that stuff. So nothing really to analyze with this. The filters are a different story on the other hand because I've seen that uh, most of the time these will come with the normal M9A1 style um, canister, but a lot of the time I've actually seen quite a few examples of the, and it always seems to be the transitional variants too. There is a variant of the M3 diaphragm that is converted for special purpose usage. I don't know the exact designation, it might be just M3 di army diaphragm all purpose or special all service or something like that but it's just a normal m3 diaphragm that uses a msa ammonia canister or uh, ammonia canister or really any sort of specialty canister but most often than not i see them with msa ammonia canisters and the m4a1 carriers would be relabeled as for ammonia use only and i always see them with the transitional face pieces i'm not entirely sure why this is the case but that just seems to be what it is and so this is obviously a filter that could be applicable to this mask however unfortunately i do not have a carrier that is marked for ammonia use only that would be really interesting to have but i don't have i do not have that and without further ado let's get into the actual face piece itself and i'm just going to take off the m3 hose uh, i've kind of done this with all of my uh, world war ii masks where the they're just really difficult to store with m2 hoses so i just undo the wire and tape save it in a box and uh just have the m2 hose detachable for display purposes and ease of uh disassembly and storage so outwardly looking at the face piece there's really not a lot different from the normal m3 diaphragm the main thing that you'll notice right off the bat is obviously the fact that the uh Hardware, or the diaphragm, is painted gray instead of black. Um, the harness webbing is black as well, instead of uh, whereas this is gray. And the main difference here in hardware is in the harness, because the older M3, or, or the normal production M3s, use a standard M2 harness, whereas this one uses an M2A1. Really, the only difference between the two is the head pad and the materials, whereas the M2A1 has a sort of duck canvas head pad that's in a rectangular shape, whereas the M2A1 uses a cotton and felt head pad that has a more uh, sort of... Uh, I guess hexagonal shape sort of thing. It's more rectangular, but it, as you can see, it has a point at the bottom. So not really too much else different aside between the two, just that material difference. And as I said, this example is really freaking minty. Like there, when I got this, there was almost no discoloration or anything. This, this thing didn't barely needed any cleaning at all. It was just this fucking minty looking. And really, you know, again, structurally, there's not much different than, than a normal M3 diaphragm. It's just the coloration and the... Uh, some slight differences in the harness hardware. So I should also point out that this face piece is made by a Kushnet, whereas most of both of my M3, both my M3 and my M3A1 Army diaphragms, uh, the, the the black one and the M3A1 were made by General Tire and Rubber. So this is the only M3 diaphragm that I have that is not made by General. 
um, which is probably explains the, the weird nature of the rubber because I know different companies had different rubber blends, even though it was all up to class B gray specifications. There was some variance uh, in the shade and coloration of this class B rubber. And the, it typically goes the earlier the mask is, the more bluish colored that rubber will be. Um, and as you can see, it's getting more grayish colored here, but it's sort of uh, has that bluish tinge left to it still. Uh, so I will take this off the head and we'll show off the individual little details. Uh, the main flaw that, I, that this mask had when I got it, obviously, as you can see here, it is quite warped. This is, in fact, the stiffest Class B gray rubber I've ever handled. Usually it's very soft and supple, but this, this, com this composition is very stiff. It's almost like navy diaphragm uh, styrene butadiene rubber, but it's still natural rubber. I don't, there's no indicating marks anywhere that says that it's artificial rubber, so I don't know what the hell is going on here, but certainly interesting nonetheless, and it, it really just feels experimental. Like, not experimental in the sense of, like, it's, uh, you know, trying to usher in a whole new design, but it's just like they were definitely fooling around with the blends of rubber and the hardware when they made this, so... Anyhow, uh, getting onto the markings on the chin, which you unfortunately will probably not be able to read very well, but you can see right here it says lot B509. That's just a lot number. This the you have the Akushnet stamp M5, which I believe is the blend of the rubber used, and then a date of 7 1942, and then the mold designation E42 R65, which would have been the experimental designation of this face piece, um, and really nothing much else to see. The M6 spearhead valve is made by the Continental Rubber Company, although the stamp is a bit obstructed by the plastic Y-tube deflector. And interestingly, the um, the guard for this valve is actually made out of steel, and when they're usually brass, or at least they're they're brass on the uh, the black M3 diaphragms. As you can see, where the paint is chipped away, it's showing that it's brass underneath. Um, and interestingly, the rest of the diaphragm angle tube assembly is brass as well. It is not magnetic, at least. So there are very few steel components on this mask, but you can tell, like as as I said, the the valve guard and then all of the rivets are steel. So they were definitely making that. They were definitely trying to reserve brass for cartridges and shell casings, things like that. So um, really, not much else to see. Uh, looking on the interior, one thing I should note is that this mask did not actually come with a speech cone. Uh, and it, as most of you may know, that the M3 diaphragm series will typically have a small rubber cone on the inside of the diaphragm to redirect your voice better and further amplify it. But for whatever peculiar reason, this one did not come with a speech cone and it does not show any signs of it of there ever being one attached. So I did have a spare and I just slapped that on there. I don't know if these would have used a, a black one as you see here or a gray one, but Either way, I have one in here now, so it's good for display purposes. And you do have some handwritten markings on the inside. You have a D right here, or possibly, yeah, it's, I think it's a D. And then, then a couple numbers on this particular rivet here. I'm not really sure what that's all about. Probably inspection uh, or something of the sort. And really nothing remarkable to see on the inside. It's just, just an M3 diaphragm, basically just some weird coloring. And that being said, there's really not much else to say about this mask. I'm just really glad I got it, especially for as cheap as I did. I wasn't actually expecting to win this because there was like 11 other watchers on this thing, and it ended up going for just under $40. I know these have been going for a lot more lately, so uh, but I'm very thankful to get this, and especially as minty as it was. Um, again, just glad to show this off to you guys. I, I basically have all the main variants of the M3 diaphragm at this point. The only ones that I'm missing are the... Uh, the post-war reconfigured for training M3A1 that uses a black diaphragm angle tube assembly as opposed to the, the gray plastic. Um, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm mostly just concerned with getting standard issue type of stuff. So that being said, that's really all I have to say on this. I hope you enjoyed. I'll try to get more videos out soon. I don't really have much that I'm expecting at this point. But nevertheless, um, if you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, drop them in the comments below, and I'll see you all later.